Hi, this is Brian Forrester, and today we're exploring the Temple of Seti I at Abydos, as well as the Osirion, and more. Seti I was probably one of the least well-known pharaohs of the New Kingdom period of ancient Egypt. However, his temple in Abydos is among the most famous, cited by many as the most impressive religious structure still standing in Egypt. It's also the location of the very controversial helicopter, tank, um, submarine carving on the surface of one of the walls. And it's up to you to figure out whether or not you believe that that's the case. Abydos has a special place in the sacred landscape of ancient Egypt, as it was believed to be the place where Osiris was buried. Thus, Abydos was an important cult center for Osiris. A number of temples dedicated to him, all of which were located in one area, were built prior to the reign of Seti. The temple of Seti, however, was built on new ground to the south of the said temples. Seti's temple was built mainly of limestone, though parts of it were built in sandstone as well. Although the work began under Seti, the temple was only completed during the reign of his son, Ramses II. This is visible in some of the temple's reliefs depicting Ramses slaying Asiatics and worshipping Osiris. Like the temples of his predecessors, Seti's temple was dedicated to Osiris and consisted of a pylon, two open courts, two hypostyle wall, uh, halls, seven shrines, and more. There are also fascinating light effects because the whole inside of the complex is illuminated by holes in the ceiling, as you can see here. And it's fun to film, film this effect because it shows the brilliance of the engineering of ancient dynastic Egyptians in terms of illuminating massive temples like this. And then also what we find is this king's list, which is located on the way to the Osirion. And if you have a really good guide, what you'll find out is that the king, king's list is actually not complete because all of the Amarna period, meaning, for example, Tutankhamun, Akhenaten, and others of the 18th dynasty are missing from that list. But for me, what's most impressive is going outside of Seti's temple and exploring the very enigmatic, megalithic, and mysterious Osirion. Unfortunately, on this day, the Osirion was closed to the public, but we were told by the local guards that it will be opened fully to the public very, very soon. We were there in April of 2019, so by the time we go back in March of 2020, the whole of the sub subterranean, basically, Osirion will be open to us. Now notice the size of the stones that make up the Osirion. It was found in the 19th century or rediscovered by archaeologists. They literally, I think, had to dig it out. It was buried in sand. You can see the sense of scale. The vertical stones are granite, probably from Aswan, and then the perimeter wall is made of quartzite from Cairo. So it's a classic example of a pre-dynastic work where the stones were brought from great distances. It didn't seem to matter, according to the ancient builders, how far they had to go to get the correct stone. And what its original function was remains a mystery. Some Egyptologists label it as a symbolic tomb, but I honestly don't understand what that term means. A symbolic tomb? I think it's simply that they don't understand what its original function was, and so they simply had to put some kind of label on it. 
Now, contrary to popular belief, some people think that uh, Egypt's ancient sites are becoming more and more restricted in terms of access, but actually it's the complete opposite. Every time we go, more and more ancient places, especially the megalithic ones that we like to see, are opened up to the general public. And that's true in the case that you're about to see. Walking towards there, we walk past thousands upon thousands of broken pieces of ancient dynastic pottery. And there is a little town located nearby. As far as I can remember, this is one of the Ramses II um, complexes, but I, I honestly have forgotten what the name of it was. But what we're going to see is, like in many places, the, the difference between a dynastic construction and an older pre-dynastic megalithic construction. So we were very fortunate in that I got there just in time for it to be opened up. You see some broken hard stone works there. And then here, lots of repair work done to this complex. And the limestone and sandstone aspects are from the dynastic period, but others, like this black granite gateway, are pre-dynastic and show signs of ancient cataclysmic damage and cracking, and then, of course, modern archaeological repair. So if you look very carefully at this black granite, you can see cracks and breaks and very strange damage that can't be explained according to standard academia. But um, this walkway and this gate show major cracks and very uh, high heat apparently struck this. It could have been a solar plasma flare like we have seen at other locations like Karnak. So here we have dynastic work. You see some of the original paint is still present. This is either limestone or sandstone. And here, this is a large piece of travertine that literally looked like, looks like it exploded and of course was then later repaired by modern Egyptologists. But the Holy of Holy, or pathway towards this large piece of travertine on either side shows major heat scorching and damage. And inside the Holy of Holies at the very end, we see travertine on top and quartzite on the bottom. Super tight fitting. I think this again is a pre-dynastic work. And that's, again, typical of what we see in Egypt. We find dynastic work, and then we find pre-dynastic works. The pre-dynastic work in general has been damaged by cataclysmic activity. And unfortunately, a lot of the dynastic work has been damaged too by armies or others that have invaded the area over the course of thousands of years. This is a large piece of ancient granite. And if you look very carefully in the middle of the video, you can see that groove that appears to be a cut mark done by an ancient saw. And we know now that the dynastic people did not have saws capable of efficiently cutting into granite. So thank you very much as always for watching my videos and stay tuned, subscribe, and share this and others with your friends and family. If you'd like to join us, we'll be in Turkey in September of 2019 on tour. You can also come and join us in India as we explore ancient machining evidence in January of 2020. We return to Egypt in March of 2020. And after that, we're going to Israel to look at megalithic sites in the Holy Land. Thank you once again for watching.